Hi guys, Halls here from Halls Fitness. Another video, a quick one. I'm actually going to touch on GI, glycemic index. Now, this is important to know because a lot of the times you'll eat foods where you think, oh, you know, I just had that, but I'm always, but I'm still hungry, or I've just had that, and I'm hungry sooner than you are with other foods. Now, reason being is is based on the glycemic index in which that food relates to. Now, GI refers to basically an index and it has a number. High GI is in every food is allocated a number and high GI foods range from above 70. And low GI foods range under 55. Moderate is in between, but we'll stick with high and low GI at the moment. Now, the best way I can describe this is like a funnel. And this is how it was described to me by when I was learning all this stuff and the research that I've found. And I found this was the best way to explain the way that GI works. The higher the GI, the faster it goes through your body. Simple. Put the lower the GI, the longer it takes. So the lower, the longer, the higher, the faster. So let's, for example, assume that we're eating low GI foods. Now they go into our body and they're going to come in around here. So as they come in, it takes longer to siphon out the other end. Here is basically where our level of energy is no more. So when we put foods in, it takes all this time to get to the bottom of the funnel. So low GI foods come in around here energy expenditure, longer period of time. High GI foods will come in around here. Not much, not far to go. So basically they get into your system and they're gone rapidly. The higher the GI, the faster they, your body expends that energy. That's basically high GI and low GI. Now high GI foods consist of basically processed foods or you know, things like fast food, uh, simple sugars, so simple carbs, sorry, so like your sugars, refined sugars, uh, white bread and white rice, both because they've been processed. And a lot of the times, the higher the GI foods will be of the processed kind. Now, on the other spectrum, you've got low GI foods like sweet potato, brown rice, lentils or non-processed foods. Uh, you can find index, you can find GI indexes on oh, sorry glycemic index indexes. You can find GI lists online, and you can find where your foods sit and basically where they come in to this funnel. So as you can see, low GI foods come in up here, and the high GI foods come in down here, and they'll come in at certain levels like a funnel. So. Let's have a look at brown rice for example. Um, the reason, it's the difference between brown rice and white rice, and people say, oh, you gotta have brown rice. The only reason that's better is because you feel fuller for longer. You know, so it's not, and it's not like a magic food over white rice. When you think about it, white rice has just been processed more, it doesn't have the husk on it, whereas brown rice does. Your body takes longer to break the husk to get inside to get basically what white rice is from when you buy it as white rice. So it breaks down the husk, whereas this doesn't have the husk on it already, and so it'll process a lot quicker, making it a higher GI food. It probably sits around up here. Simple sugars, here. And that takes me into your energy expenditure. High GI foods, um, if you're gonna eat them, basically like a McDonald's burger or something that's been processed, a simple sugar, it's good to have them maybe pre-workout because what they're going to do is they're going to come into your system real quick and you're going to have about 15, 15 minutes and they're going to be into your bloodstream and you're going to be able to use them for energy. So the higher the GI foods before your workouts, the better. You can eat them beforehand. Now, if you have low GI foods before your workout, it's best to have them about an hour before. So, because it's going to take a longer time before they become ready available energy. 
So it's around this mark where you'll be thinking, oh, okay, I can actually use the energy now. So that's why they say, that's why things like Gatorade and uh, all those energy drinks, because they have simple sugars in them. They have sugar in them that gives you that quick burst of energy. I won't get into too much regarding your insulin level and carbohydrates and the way that they're all um, oxidized and filtered through the liver, etc. That's, again, for another day. Um, all research you can do yourself online. It's basically how I learned it, and over the last few years, that's how, you know, a few years, yeah, a long time actually, that I've actually come to know all this information off the cusp of my head, is because I research it all the time. So you can do the same, and you can save yourself a fortune, essentially, uh, where people pay myself to do up their meal plans and stuff. I don't want to have to do this. I only do it as a means to help you guys, and I have meal plans, that you only need to go on for a certain amount of time because in that time I like to give you as much knowledge why you're having foods. I mean, some people just go, you know what, I don't want, I don't care. Who's pay me? I'll pay you. You can do up the plan and you can worry about my body and I'll just go about my daily business. But sometimes a lot of people want to know this stuff. They want to know why food does what it does. They want to know what their body's actually doing. And you can, like I said, you can save yourself essentially a lot of money if you know some information. So again, touching on high GI, the higher the GI, the faster you can use that energy. The lower the GI, the slower it takes to go through your bloodstream and the longer it takes to break down and the fuller you feel. So when they push low GI foods, it's because you feel fuller for longer. And generally they're non-processed foods. So white rice over brown rice, well you wouldn't, because white rice is a higher, unless you wanted it quicker, um, energy release, you go for the white rice. But brown rice over white rice because you feel fuller for longer. Uh, brown bread over white bread for the same reason. Now, multigrain breads, they have, you know, obviously they've got whole grains in them, so they're gonna take a lot longer to break down. So they're a lower GI. Does that all start to make sense? Low GI comes in here, it takes a lot longer to get to here than high GI foods that come in here. So here is where you'd have your juices, your sugars, your um, uh, basically anything that is processed to the point where it's just going to be quick releasing. I don't know how else to simplify it guys, but that's high GI and low GI. Now these are GI meaning glycemic index. Foods also have numbers that are called a glycemic load. Now, that means how fast, again, um, it goes through your body, but that's touching on something else. You can go and research glycemic loads as well. Uh, a lot of the times, now, I was watching a Nick Wright bodybuilding uh, video the other day. Shout out to Nick Wright. I doubt that he watches my videos, but I still like to make reference to those that I watch as well. Uh, so Nick Wright bodybuilding, he basically said, you know, GI foods are all bullshit because of what videos you may have seen in mine before, you basically want to hit your calories for the day. And you don't have to worry about GI food. So that's why a glycemic index, it's not so much bullshit as it is, you don't really need to know. But it's nice to know that the lower the GI, the slower that it goes through your body. And I think Nick Wright was saying that he's very susceptible to um, carbs in the way that he cycles through them pretty quickly. So he doesn't, he likes to eat he can eat higher GI foods because he cycles through them a lot quicker um, so he doesn't have uh, the excess bloat that goes with him because you hold on to water the more da 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 making him look fluffy Nick. Anyway, great. If you want to check it out, I've got him on my list of sub, um, videos to watch. Nick Wright Bodybuilding. Uh, I have others that I watch too. If you want to know what they are, just ask, comment below and I'll link them. They're all, I don't know if it's this side or if it's this side here. But they're all listed, the ones that I subscribe to anyway. But um, yeah, so just keep that in mind, guys. High GI foods, the faster they come in, the faster they go out. Low GI, obviously slower releasing. And they're what we aim for when you're bodybuilding, I guess, because you feel fuller for longer and you're only limited to a certain amount of calories. So you don't want to be feeling full 10 minutes after you've had this massive high GI you know, meal and then be like, well, if I eat now again, I can't eat for another, well, 
you know, I'm going to be, it's only 12 o'clock in the afternoon and I'm already ready for my next meal when usually I spread them out. Over, do, you, do you see what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I aim for high, uh, sorry, low GI foods, that way I'm fuller for longer and basically I can use the energy over a period of time and it's just not come and gone. So if you ever eat McDonald's and you wonder that you're hungry five minutes later, that's why. Because they're high GI foods and they come in here, energy expenditure gone. Whereas when you have healthier, fuller meals, they're low GI foods generally and they come in up here so you feel fuller for longer. Thanks guys, have a great day and as usual don't forget to comment and subscribe. Any questions down below and I'll get back at you. See you later.